What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a route combination that I absolutely love. To It's kind of a fill out route combination. It's a route combination that you can call out a trip side in that is really going to help you not only be able to beat every defense in the game, it's great against pressure, really good against the blitz, um, but it's also a route combination that I think is really slept on in this game. So we're going to be talking to you today about how you can utilize this route combination to beat the meta blitzes as well as to beat um, any kind of man coverage, zone coverage that you might be facing. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, it's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies that we release every single day here on the YouTube channel. And the other thing that I want to quickly point out to you is if you've not joined our Patreon membership yet, that's basically where you can get access to all of my Madden 22 offensive and defensive ebooks. I've got over 20 offensive and defensive guides available in the Patreon membership. And the cool part about it is every single week, we probably two to three times a week drop update videos to those game plans or to those ebooks that kind of help, um, you know, as the meta shifts and evolves and kind of helps the ebooks essentially evolve along with the game. So um, by joining the Patreon, it's only $10 a month and you're going to get access to all of our ebooks, but you're also going to get access to all of our um, all of our updates to those ebooks. In addition to that, you're going to get access to any new ebooks that we release or new updates while your membership is active. So it's basically just a one stop shop for everything that you need. If you want to get access to it, there's a link in the description. You can click that link down below to go check it out. Okay, guys, so the concept that I wanted to talk with us today about is the play verticals out of the trips tied in. We're going to focus on a couple of key points of this concept and why I like it against. Um, any kind of blitz, but I also really like this concept against any kind of really defense and I feel like maybe I don't know, don't have a good grasp on what they're doing defensively. This is a great play to just kind of get a feel uh, for what your opponent is doing. So the play is verticals at a trip side in. You can find this in the Detroit Lions playbook or in the New England Patriots playbook. There's other playbooks too, but those are the two best in my opinion. And um, we're just going to jump on the field now. You want to call this play with your ball uh, or with your trips um, to the wide side of the field. So if the ball was on this hash, we would just simply flip the setup. Okay. Um, now there are, in, in my opinion, trips tied in. There's actually some really good setup short side as well. Um, but you know, whenever you can have the ability to flip and at the same time still not flip, you open up a lot of powerful options for your team uh, and for your offense. So from a set of perspective, how do I like to run this concept? Well, what I what I want to do is I want to smart route my tight end route. I'm going to then put my running back on an out route. This is going to help me beat any man-to-man -man type pressure, any kind of man coverage. I'm going to be utilizing the right side of the field for that. On the left side of the field, we're going to put the number one receiver, Scotty Miller, on an out. We're going to put Mike Evans on a hitch, the number two receiver, and the number three receivers, Chris Godwin, we're going to put him on a curl. Now, the curl will beat man-to-man -man coverage, okay? The curl will beat man-to-man -man coverage with a pass lead down if you throw it right on the cut. The other two routes are really more for zone blitzes or zone coverages, and we're just going to run through some of the coverages. So against cover four, what you're going to notice if it's zone, you're really going to want to work this left side of the field. As you can see, nine times out of ten, that hitch is going to be wide open um, on the left side of the field against zone. So... We'll show you some other concepts. That was cover four. I'm gonna show you cover three real quick. If it's cover three, again, you see the hitch is wide open. We can just easily take that as a simple game to be able to continue to put the offense on schedule. Now, the other thing that I wanna quickly point out on the left side of the screen is let's say that the user is in the field and let's just say that he runs, um, let's say for example, that he mans up this hitch and he runs to the curl. In that situation, what we can do on the right side is isolate this right side and have a simple high-low read. And just, again, 5 to 10 yards. It's all we're looking to do with this concept. It's something that we can kind of get a feel for what they're doing and then be able to attack later on down the field. Now, another con or, uh, another coverage that you're going to see, and really, in my opinion, the best coverage um, for this play call is a cover 2. And what you're going to see out of a cover 2 here is again, your hitch on the left will be wide open and you can take that for easy yardage. Now, another thing real quick that you might consider doing is zigging the outside receiver. And the reason why uh, I wanted to suggest that you might wanna zig him is because in situations where they don't have hard flats, you could just, he's gonna curl up and be basically like a little hitch on the left. 
And you see how that does against cover two. It's a great read for if maybe they're dropping their zone drops to 15 yards or something and they're trying to play a little bit deeper. A lot of people like to do that from a cover two base. So what they'll do is they'll utilize maybe, you know, something like this where they have kind of a, they kind of have that cloud there. And then they're going to take maybe that, that middle guy and man him up or whatever, right? But the key here is that the cloud flat is to kind of imitate that 30 yard drop, right? And so as you can see, they're not honoring the flats, so we can abuse the flats on the left side, and we can force them to have to hard flat. That's what this whole concept is about, forcing them to have to hard flat. Now, if they hard flat, what well, the way they're gonna do that typically is through a shaded coverage, um, shading their coverage down. And when that happens, what you're gonna notice on the right side here is you see here that I have a lot more opportunity to be able to hit my tight end. Now I want to show you a couple of things with zone blitzes real quick. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and reset my zone drops real quick here. I did have the five yard depth on the, the hook curls. Uh, but what you'll see, and again, the zone drops are kind of a microcosm of how it's practically going to work out. But but anyways, it, now I wanted to take a, a quick stab here and, and just kind of talk a little bit through some, some blitzing concepts that you're going to see. Uh, the first one we're going to show you is just a simple zone blitz, but again, this is why I love that little uh, zig. If you want to put him on a smoke screen, you could also do that. Those are all good ways to just work that flat, which is what we're trying to do in this in this play. So let's talk about the first blitz, and that is a cover three hard flat blitz with a user that is going to be in the middle of the field. And basically what we're going to do with this is we're going to expose the flats because again, we're going to stress that they have to have double flats on both sides to be able to stop this. So what you're going to see on the right side is if they're playing hard flat, then I can just simply take my tight end corner. And you might want to throw that just a little bit earlier. You don't have to smart route that tight end corner. I think that it helps a little bit when we get into some of the man concepts. But if you don't think that it helps you, then don't worry about it. You can leave it as it is. So what I want to show you about this tight end corner though, is if it's a hard flat, a lot of times what you can do, and I'm butchering my, my pass lead here, a lot of times what you can do is like if they're going to send you a cover three hard flat blitz, a lot of times they're going to put this guy in a uh, deep half and they're going to put this guy in a hard flat. And the reason why is to protect them from seam streaks. So that way they're not going to get seam streaked really, especially on that left side. So that's something that you want to be kind of on the lookout for. Um, if you're seeing that as a tendency, this makes this even better because you see here the deep half is not going to guard the tight end. And again, I'll show that one more time. I'm getting um, having Brady's release is killing me here, but let me just show you one more time. So again, just a simple, just a simple cover two, uh, or uh, just simple zone blitz with hard flats is all we're is all we're trying to show here. So again, I like the running back flat, but again, if they're running a lot of zone blitzes on you, you might consider putting him on a wheel. Um, it does help open space um, against against zone. But anyways, what you'll see, you just pass leave that to the right, and you see it's a really good zone beater. Okay, now that's not the only zone beater that you have on your on your concept here. So let's say that they open up to the tight end because they don't want to deal with they don't want to get seam streaked, right? Or they because they can't quite tell if it's a streak or a corner right off the bat, obviously. So now you're going to have to stress that one defender on the left. So what you're going to see is if they go to the right with the user, now I can just attack this curl right in the middle of the field. Now, a safer read on this, in my opinion, a little bit of a safer read on this, especially um, if you're worried about this user potentially jumping to the left side of the screen, a safer read against a cover three blitz is to work this hitch on the right side. And what you're going to see, because he comes open really fast, and you see they basically have to take the curl, and that leaves the hitch wide open for easy, easy yardage. So that's a simple way um, to beat a cover three blitz. Now, I wanted to spend just a few minutes with you here shortly on a cover two blitz. Why would I want to talk about a cover two blitz? Well, a cover two blitz, if you think about it, is going to be the best blitzing concept for this concept because it's an underneath passing concept. So in this situation, what you're going to see now is notice that that curl is going to look like it's covered, but then it's going to come open late in the play. And again, this comes back to what we were just talking about. Where does their user go at the snap of the ball? Typically, okay, this is just typically, their user is almost always going to want to run to the left side. If that's the case and they're running cover two, then this is where I think you could justify putting that running back on a wheel 
because the flat will get pulled and it leaves this real massive lane where you can hit that route right there to the tight end. Lastly, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes with you guys here today talking about man-to-man -man pressure and how to deal um, how to deal with man-to-man man-to-man uh, -man pressure. In trips, it's fairly simple because of the fact of the alignment of the formation. They're very much so misaligned on this running back, so the running back wheel is very helpful in terms of beating this because he's just going to shoot out there, just pass lead outside. You need this nice rack catch animation, and you're going to be able to beat that coverage uh, just like that. Now, I wanted to give you one other example, and that's the Overstorm Brave. So again, it's a five. It's just a simple five man. I'm going to user this guy. Um, you know, just kind of imagine the pressure is going to be instantaneous. Um, but if you think about it, so in this situation, I'm going to kind of watch out for like the little quick slant or quick hitch uh, to the right side of the screen. And now this is one of my, this is where I really love this right side. So if you use the, the out route, it's just a little bit more consistent against man. And you'll see that that running back out route will almost always, especially in an alignment like that right there, where they're not man aligned on you, but they're still in man coverage. Notice that the corner and the safety, um, notice that the corner and the safety are basically in a banjo concept uh, with the running back and the tight end, which makes this tight end corner very difficult to guard in man-to-man. -man. Now, let me show you the wheel real quick against that same coverage. You're just gonna notice it, so just a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit more difficult to consistently hit. You can certainly use the wheel. I'm not, I'm, you know, again, you can do either the wheel or the out, both just like you can do the zig or the out on the backside. But what you'll see with the wheel is, like, where do I throw that, right? He has great positioning on the running back. Um, obviously, you can throw wheel, a wheel route, you know, late into the play, but you, it, it's, it's actually rather difficult to throw the wheel route early like you could if they were in a man aligned situation because um, they actually get decent alignment in terms of how this is going to play. So if I, tro if I throw this out here, like I can hit it, but it's, it's kind of a risky throw. So definitely if you're going to try to trust that, I would get in the lab a little bit more on this in particular play. Um, with that running back wheel and kind of master throwing the wheel from trips because it's very different than throwing the wheel from bunch. But one thing I love is this low ball corner. I, I think that this low ball corner is, is the route that people have been really sleeping on, um, especially against a cover three concept where they're, where they're basically running the hard flat stuff. Because if they go to the left side, this whole, I mean, th that is such a good throw right there. Such a simple read for easy yardage. So, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, resource or my favorite play calls to beat a defense like the nickel normal, which is going to be very similar. Um, I'm going to try to make it very similar to the four three even. So a situation like this where they have, you know, kind of some coverage that looks essentially like this right here, um, you know, real real aggressive, uh, real aggressive style concept. This is a great. The wheel is really good against four three even because if they don't really have anyone that's devoted to defending the running back, right? So you can run something like this, and you see how quick that corner gets open. And that corner will get open even against Mabel coverage. I'll show that real quickly out of the nickel normal just to kind of simulate a 4-3 even. Because I do think that the 4-3 even um, against trips tight end and, and defenses like the 4-3 even can give you a little bit of trouble. But basically what they're going to do is they would be in a situation where they're going to blitz these two guys. And then these guys, they're going to kind of play them almost like seam flat defenders. They're just underneath defenders. And then, of course, they're going to be using in the middle of the field. Typically, it's a 30-yard cloud, a 10-yard purple um, that you're going to see. And this is where the verticals play really, in my opinion, makes its money because they have to go to the left side. There's just too much of a concept over there for them. They have to go guard the curl. But in this situation, what you'll see is that that seam flat really doesn't get in a, a great spot. Kyle Duggar actually played that really, really well. Um, but that seam flat is, is really because, again, it's a 5- or 10-yard um, zone. It's a little bit, I, I guess I could have set my zone drops here, but I'm just trying to show you the basic principle. So again, this guy's here, and then you know, you've know got a guy here, and then you've got a guy here, right? Well, these guys on the outside are gonna be blitzing, and these guys down low are trying to get out for like a table route. That's really what their goal is. They're not trying to stop a curl route. They're trying to stop like a table route, um, and on their way kind of, you know, get you to hesitate is basically the idea. But you'll see right here that this void right there to the tight end, you can quick pass that and, you know, against that, you see that the, the, the defender doesn't really get there. Um, the only defender that gets there is potentially this guy. But you have to remember a lot of times in the 4-3 even, they're going to be base aligning their cover two. A lot of times that's how they play it. 
And so, and, and this is also why I like the smart route to tight end. It just gives us a little bit more space. And now what you're gonna see is the low ball right on the cut. And you see that the zone really can't get over there. So this is a concept, like I said, I think a lot of people, um, you know, we've ran this since Madden 19, but it's still really, really valuable and it's still really effective. So I just wanted to do a video on this today and show you how this can really help you um, just get a feel for what your defense or your opponent's doing defensively and put you in a position to be able to, again, stretch their user horizontally so that then you can stretch them vertically. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you want to get my full um, Patreon membership, it's only $10 a month. You get my trip set in guide. You also get um, a ton of other guides. I've got a lot of updates for my trip side in ebook that we're going to be dropping next week. Got some new offenses that I'm going to be working towards. Got a really fun little uh, Packer trips formation that I'm going to be hopefully breaking down in the next week or so. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to sign up and become a Patreon member, there's a link in the description below. You can sign up today for just $10 a month. Get you access to everything that we have over there, all the ebooks and all the updates. So if you want to check it out, head on down to the description of the video and click the link that I put down there for you.